in the previous playwright api testing tutorial you have seen how to pass query parameters in playwright in this api testing tutorial we are going to see how to create put api request in playwright so let's see the firstly manual scenario then we will automate it using playwright so here i will go to the postman tool so firstly we will create the booking and by using this booking id so we are going to update the booking details in the server so before we update the booking details so we need the token so that's the reason we have to generate the token by using the post api call so if you see here so we are getting the token id and i will go to the update booking api and in the header we are passing the token number whatever we are generating in the previous token generator api and also we are passing the booking id so we want to update the that particular booking details so that's the reason we are passing the booking id in the url and we are hitting this api then we are getting the response as the 200 status code and also we are getting the all the booking details that is the latest booking details so let's automate this particular scenario so i will go to the vs code now and here i'm creating one spec file called put underscore api underscore request underscore 06 dot so here i'll say 07 dot spec dot js so that's it so here i will go to the get api request and simply i will copy the whole test and i'll paste it inside the put api request so firstly i will update the test name so here i'll say create put api request in playwright so let me explain you what exactly we are doing in this api test so firstly we are reading the json file and we are creating the runtime api request body by using the re dynamic request body so here we are making the post api call so this is where exactly we are creating the booking and after that we are validating the status code and in the line number 25 so we are getting the booking id so by using this booking id we can we can check whether booking details are present in the application server or not in the next apis and after that we are validating the api response that is the whether we have created a successfully booking or not so we are validating all those api response body and then so we are making the get api call so this is where we are passing the booking id by using the booking id we are checking whether booking details are present in the application and server or not by asserting the status code so that's it guys so here we have to generate the firstly token here i'll say generate token and after that we have to create the put api call so let's generate the firstly token to generate the token guys so we have to create the post api request call so that's the reason what i will do is so simply i will take this particular api request body and i will go to the test hyphen data folder and here i'm creating one json file here i'll say put underscore request underscore body dot json so let me update the file name so that's it so here i will add the token generator api request body so we know already how to read the json file so here i will go back to the put api request so firstly i will read the this particular json file by using this api request body so i will create the post api call then i will get the token number by using this token number we can update the booking details in the application server so here i'll say require inside the require so here we have to pass the location of the json file so here i'll say test data slash so we have the one json file called put request body json file so this is where exactly we have added the token generator api request body so i will assign back to the token 
request body so that's it guys now what i will do is simply i will use the request object by using the request object and before that i'm using the await keyword followed by request object dot so simply i'm making the one call called post so inside the post so here we have to pass the url firstly so let's pass the url to generate the token so simply here we have to pass the slash auth so let's pass this particular url and after that so here we have to pass the api request body by using the data object so here i will say so simply i will pass the api request body where we have specified inside the put request body json file so simply i will go above here so just now we have written a statement to read the put request body json file so simply i will take this variable and i'll pass on to the data object so that's it guys so after making the post api call so we will get the response so i will assign assign the api response back to the one constant variable called token response so that's it guys so if i want to read the this particular token number right firstly i need to get the api response body by using the api response body i can get the token number so that's the reason what i will do is so firstly i will get the api response body by using the await followed by the token response variable dot json so this json method will returns me the token response token api response body and i will assign back to the one constant variable called token api response body so by using this variable i can get the token number simply so here i'll say token api response body dot and followed by that simply i will add the key name so in our case key name is token so simply i will add the token here that's it then i will assign back to the one constant variable called token number so that's it guys now i will print this token number just to make sure that we are making the correct api call so by using the console.log statement so here i will say token number is then simply i will add the token number variable so i will run this test just i will make sure that we are able to generate the token so once we are able to generate the token so we can create the put api request by using that we can update the resource details in the application server so let's run the test and if you see here guys so this is the post api response body and this is the get api details and after that so here we are seeing the token number so we are able to generate the token number successfully now let's create a put api request so before we go ahead and create a put api request so here i will do a small modification to the json file so this particular put request body so we have used this particular request body to generate the token so that's the reason i will rename this file with token request body so that's it guys now i will go back to the postman so let's get the put api details so here we are going to we are going to create the put api request so this is where we have to pass the this particular url so we have to pass the url as slash booking followed by the booking id and also we have to pass the this particular api request body and also we have to pass the headers we have to pass content type and as well as we have to pass the cookie data and inside the cookie data we have to pass the token number so let's create the one json file firstly i will add the api request body inside the json file so here i'm creating the one json file called put underscore request underscore body dot spec dot sorry guys so here i'll say json that's it so we are creating a json file and inside the json file i'm adding the put api request body that's it now let's create a 
put API request. To create a put API request call, so we have to read the this particular put request body. So that's the reason. So I will read that particular request body by using require and inside the required simply we have to pass the location of the JSON file. So here we have the test data. Inside the test data we have the put request body. That's it. Then I will assign back to the one variable called put request body. So that's it guys. Now we have the put request body ready. So by using this put request body so we can create the put API call. So here I'm using the directly request object. So before request object, we have to use the await keyword. Followed by that, we have to use the request object dot. So directly here, we can call to the function called put. And inside the put function, we have to pass two parameters. One is URL we have to pass. And second one is we have to pass the headers and we have to pass the API request body also. So let's copy the URL. So firstly, I'm adding the URL and here we have to pass the booking booking ID. So already we have the booking ID in the line number 29. So simply we have to pass this booking ID. That's the BID here. So I will pass the booking ID here. That's it. And I'll put comma. And after that, here we have to pass the two objects. One is headers and second one is API request body. So let's pass the headers first. So here I'll pass the headers object. So for here we have to pass the two key and respective values. One is content hyphen type and second one is cookie. So let's pass the content. So inside the double quotes, we have to specify the key name content hyphen type. And after that, we have to specify the value as application slash JSON. And in the similar way, we have to pass the cookie as the another key and we have to pass the respective value. And if you look at this particular respective value, so we have to pass the token equal to and the this is the token number. So already we know how to, we have already generated the token number. So here I'll say token equal to and I'll put the, so let me remove this double quotes. We have to write this in the single quotation. So that's it. And here I'll put the dollar symbol and within the floor brackets. So simply I will pass the our token number, whatever we have generated earlier. So I'm passing the variable over here. So that's it guys. So we are done with creating the headers. So if you are having any, any additional headers, simply you can pass the any headers over here. So I will put comma and we have to pass the API request body as well. So inside the data object. So already we have we have the API request body in the variable called put request body. So simply I will take this particular variable and I will pass on to the data object. So that's it guys. So after making the put API request, so we will get the API response also, right? So that's the reason I will assign back to the one variable called put response. That's it. So by using the put response, I can print the all the details. So let's print the firstly details. So I will print the API response body. And after, after that, we will assert the status code as well. So here I will use the await keyword. And after that, I will use put response dot JSON. So this JSON function will returns me the API response body. So that's the reason I will assign back to the one variable called put response body. So that's it. So simply I will print this particular statement by using console.log. So it will say console.log and I will print the put API response body in the console output. So just to make the difference in the console output, whatever we are printing. So I'm writing one simple console.log statement. So this so this one, what we have written is for the, let me just delete this stuff. I'll put to equal to and I'll say get API. And in the similar way, I'll add it for the 
post API as well. So here I'll say to hyphen sorry to equal to here I'll say post post API and we are making the get API call after that. Then finally we are making the put API call. So here I'll write it as the put so that we can differentiate the output properly. So that's it guys. So we are done with creating the, creating the put API call. So let me summarize what we have done so far. So firstly we have generated the token. So our API request body is present inside the token request body JSON file and from that so we are creating the post API call and once we are having the token API response so we are saving the token number inside the one of the variable by using this token variable and the booking ID so we are creating the put API call to update the booking details. So let me run the test and we will assert the few details. So our test is running now. So let me open the test results. And if you see here guys, our test is getting passed. So firstly, so this is the details coming from the post API and we are able to create a booking with first name, last name and all the details, whatever we have added here. And here we have the booking ID as 1872. And after that, so by using the get API, so we are getting all the details, whatever we have created the bookings. Then finally, after generating the token number, so by using the put API request, so we are updating the first name and last name. And if you see here the difference, so this particular details are present while creating the booking. The first name is tester stock Cypress. But after updating the details, you can see the first name is postman by tester stock. And in the similar way, so you can observe the difference between the last name also. So last name is tester stock JavaScript. So after updating the details, so here we can see the last name rest assured by tester stock. So now let's assert the status code for the put API request. So here I'll say validate status code. So here I will use the put API response by using this one. So I can simply assert it. So here I'm using expect keyword. So inside that I'm using the put response, put API response dot status. So this will returns me the API response status code by using that simply I'm calling to the another method called to be and inside that I'm passing the status code and if you see the put API request so we are getting the 200 as the status code from the application server so that's the reason here I'm asserting the 200 as the expected value now let's run the test and our test should get should get passed because there are no failures as of now so that's it guys and our test is getting passed. Let me open the output also. So our test is getting passed, right? So this is how we can create the put API request in Playwright.